There's a story that a lady of the night, a prostitute, was murdered on one of these floors. We're not sure which one, but going on the evidence we've already caught, it might have been the top floor. There was a few footsteps on the floor above us. I've been told that you were murdered here. So apparently a lot of uh, poltergeist activity takes place up on these floors. If you're... Okay, so you're knocking. Jesus. There was someone stood by me. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. I'm yes, sir. 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 Here we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here we go. It's like a light is in my face, but I can't fall for The Viaduct Tavern, once surrounded by death, murder and disease in a time long gone. The Viaduct Tavern was a Victorian gin palace which is the last of its kind in the heart of London. The tavern opened its doors in 1869 and had a clientele including the working class, lawyers and government officials, as well as criminals due to the nearby prisons. Just yards away was Newgate Prison. Built in the 12th century, the prison was extended and rebuilt many times and remained in use for over 700 years until 1902. All manner of criminals stayed in Newgate. Some committed acts of petty crime and theft, breaking and entering homes or committing highway robberies, while others performed serious crimes such as rapes and murder.
upon their arrival in Newgate, prisoners were chained and led to the appropriate dungeons for their crime. Those who had been sentenced to death stayed in a cellar beneath the keeper's house, essentially an open sewer with chains and shackles to encourage submission. Common debtors were sent to the stone hall, whereas common felons were taken to the stone hold. The dungeons were cold, dirty and unlit. The execution bell was rung by the bellman at midnight on the eve of an execution outside the condemned cells. At eight o'clock in the morning, executions took place outside for public viewing. Some people would arrive the night before to make sure they had a good view. One public house that still stands today that is opposite the Viaduct Tavern is called the Magpie and Stump. While the lower classes were crammed into the streets below, the rich were able to get a good view of the proceedings whilst enjoying a hanging breakfast for £10. The Magpie and Stump also supplied condemned prisoners with their last pint of ale. The ale was taken across the road to the prisoners in their condemned cells on the morning of their execution. Dense crowds of thousands of spectators would pack the streets to see these events. In 1807, dozens died at an execution when part of the crowd of 40,000 spectators collapsed into a human crush. Public executions discontinued in 1868 and they were carried out inside the Newgate Prison Chapel Yard. Some of Newgate's prison's occupants were Mary Frith, also known as Mole Cutpurse. She bought and sold stolen goods and was a pickpocket. She paid officials £2,000 to escape the gallows in 1644. Ben Johnson was imprisoned for killing a fellow actor in a duel, but was freed by pleading benefit of clergy in which first-time offenders could receive lesser sentences for some crimes. Claude Duval, a highwayman, was arrested while drunk in a London pub and taken to Newgate Prison. It is said that many women of high standing pleaded for his pardon, but to no avail. He was hanged in 1670, aged only 26. The last woman to be hanged in public was serial killer Catherine Wilson. She was a nurse who poisoned her patients. She was hung before a crowd of 20,000 on the 20th of October, 1862. The Central Criminal Court replaced the notorious Newgate Prison in 1902 when it was demolished in 1777. Stones from the demolished prison were used in its facade and doors and other fitments. Next door to the tavern also stood Giltspur Street Compter, a debtor's prison. The prison was built by George Dance the Younger on reform principles in 1791. Intended to hold 136 prisoners, the prisoners were divided into four classes, debtors, felons, petty offenders and those charged with assault. There were separate buildings for male and female debtors and separate rooms for those apprehended by the night watch. In practice, inmates were moved around the prison regardless of their class according to the space available. It was closed in 1853 and finally demolished in 1854. 
Today, the Viaduct Tavern looks as it did back in Victorian times, with many of the fittings and fixtures still in place. The original ticket booth is still in place where the landlord sold beer tokens to the customers to keep money away from the staff. During World War I, a drunk soldier fired his gun, the bullet hit the ceiling and then rebounded and hit one of the paintings, which still is visible to this day. At one point, there was an opium den on the first floor. And the upper floors were used as a brothel. Within the basement area, there are what many have stated are cells from the Newgate Prison or Giltspur Street Compter Debtors Prison. In the ceiling is a tube that goes to the street above that many have also stated that this is where food and money was dropped down to those who were inside the tiny cells. The Viaduct Tavern was opened in 1869, Newgate Prison was demolished in 1777 and the Giltspur Street Compter was closed in 1853, which has led many to believe that these are not cells at all as the tavern was not there at the time of the prisons. But after our research, we have found an old map dating back to 1799, which shows the building was there before it was converted into the tavern, and shows that it was part of the Giltspur Street Compter Prison. Before the tavern existed, in 1846, it was Elliot's Mineral Water Manufactory, and in 1864, it was made world linen drapers. So, we have now proven that the Viaduct Tavern was not a new building, and the cells were there long before the tavern opened its doors in 1869. There have been many reports of paranormal activity which have been reported by many of the landlords, staff and customers over many years. A thirsty ghost that will drink your beer when you're not looking. In the 1980s, the landlord was in the cellar when the lights went out, the cellar door then slammed shut and then he heard a disembodied voice say, there's just us two down here now. In 1982, the daughter of a landlord was reading a paper one Sunday afternoon in the upstairs loft. She heard footsteps coming up the stairs when suddenly the door opened and the paper she was reading was snatched out of her hands and thrown to the floor. The door then closed and the footsteps descended the stairs. Not believing what had happened, she searched the tavern, but no one was around. In 1999, two carpet fitters were working upstairs when one workman was tapped on the shoulder and then the roll of carpet levitated off the floor. A murdered prostitute dressed in black roams the location whose name is Kate.
sounds have been heard of someone in pain within the basement. Many have been touched by unseen hands. This spirit has been nicknamed as Fred. With the thousands of executions that took place outside, many believe that some of the spirits of the dead have taken up residence within the viaduct tavern. We have our static night vision cams in place. Static cam 1 is down in the basement where the cells are located. Static cam 2 is in the main bar area. Static cam 3 is on floor 3 covering the hallway. Static cam 4 is also on floor 3 inside the room where poltergeist activity is said to take place and is covering the hallway and the staircase to floor 4. Static cam 5 is on floor 4 covering the hallway. We also have placed motion detectors that will activate if there is any movement in the hallways of levels 3 and 4. To start off the investigation, we make our way up to floor 3 where poltergeist activity is said to take place. These upper floors were used as an opium den and also a brothel. There is no power to anything on these upper floors, no lights or electrical sockets have been working in years. So we've uh, made our way up to the third floor and this is the room where uh, back in the 90s the carpet fitters were in here and one of them felt a tap on his shoulder and the whole roll of uh, carpet levitated off the floor. Um, we've got a motion detector at the door there. If it picks up any movement the light will come on. So apparently a lot of uh, poltergeist activity takes place up on these floors. So can I speak to whoever it was that's here that levitated the carpet off the floor? Hello? Is there someone up there? There was like, I, I don't know what it was, some sort of noise from on the stairwell or further up the stairs.
It was like a door moved. Hello? The sound of a door moves from somewhere nearby. Here is the enhanced audio taken from Static Cam 3 covering the hallway. There's a knocking sound coming from upstairs. Hello? I can hear you. I can hear you walking. Can you come down the stairs please? Please come down the stairs. There was a few footsteps on the floor above us. As I stand on the stairs to the full floor, I hear footsteps above me on the floorboards. Here is the audio taken from Static Cam 5, which is located up on the full floor. With hearing unexplained noises and walking coming from above on the full floor, we head up the stairs to the next level. Okay, we've come up to the top floor of the um, Viaduct Tavern. Uh, this is a bit of a strange floor because it's been split up into individual rooms that, because of the shape of the building, the fact it's curved, um, they're all really odd, um, almost unusable. But there we go. Now apparently it was up on this floor where the landlady's daughter 
I believe, was sat up here reading the newspaper and she heard um, footsteps coming up the stairs. With that, the door in front of her opened and the newspaper was pulled out of her hands and it fell to the floor. Then the footsteps walked away and the door shut. Now, as I say, I'm, there's lots of little rooms up here now. I'm not sure exactly which room um, this happened in. But I'd like to ask if the spirit that did that, if you're here, and we think you might be because we heard footsteps up here earlier, but if you are here, could you come and join me, please? Now, my name is Phil. I've come here to talk to you, to find out why you stay here. Were you angry that this woman was reading the newspaper up here? Was she in your space? I know one name of a lady who worked here up on these floors. And apparently your name is Kate. Are you here, Kate? Something's touching my ear. I still feel it, my, my left ear. Hang on. Something was put like that, like that. It was, it was a gentle touch, but it was really bizarre. It felt like it was on electric. Shh, shh. It's moving. How was that? It's movement outside. Kate, if that's you, could you come towards us, please? So we can see you. I've been told that you were murdered here. Move, move again. Kate, please come through. Okay, tell me your name, your full name. We can find out. Find out what happened to you and whether the person that did it was caught and punished. Jesus. Hey there. There was someone that stood by me. Okay. There was someone that stood right by me then. Oh, hang on a minute. That is the clearest thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, calm down. There. Okay. I was stood here. No. Okay, okay. It was there. Were you trying to show yourselves to us then? Please do that again. I apologise, Mark, it made him jump. Mark sees a figure standing next to him and on review of the footage from his full spectrum night vision cam, he has captured the face of whoever it was beside him.
it is only seen for a split second as the camera pans the room. With Mark shaken from his experience of the figure standing beside him on the fourth floor, we leave him alone at the bottom of the stairs of floor three to see if the spirit captured on his cam will pay him a second visit. Me and Phil are down here, sitting down nice and comfortably, and Mark's up on the third floor all by himself doing an EVP session. And if anything happens, we ain't gonna hear him at all. Cheers, Mark. Who did I see in the top floor room earlier on? There's a black shadow right beside me. Um, you'll see from the footage, it made me really made me jump, but obviously I wasn't prepared for something to be stood by me. Who was it who I saw? Was it you, Kate? There's a story that a lady of the night, a prostitute, was murdered on one of these floors. We're not sure which one, but going on the evidence we've already caught, it might have been the top floor. Is Kate your real name, or have you got another name? Feels a bit strange and a bit spooky having my back to the stairs, but I'm sat in the best position I can. Any of the spirits that still reside here, could you make a noise for me? There's plenty of things you could move or bang on. It's gone freezing cold around me now, so I'm not sure if there's anything around me. I haven't heard anything yet. Kate, if you're on the top floor, could you make some noises for us like you did earlier on? Or whoever is up there? I'm hearing tapping noises now. I'm not sure where they're coming from. Who's tapping? Can you do it again? Mark ends his session on the third floor and we now make our way down to the cells in the basement. So here we are now down in the basement in the so-called cells um, which are believed to be part of the Giltspur Street Compter, the debtor's prison. Um, and that is a tube train underneath us. So we've got a few devices here. We've got the REM pod there. And we've got another EMF meter down there. So they say they hear um, people crying in pain and voices down here. So first of all, can I ask if there's any spirits here, if they could make a noise or shout out so we can hear you, please.
the meter started to activate. Can you do that again please? Can you touch this device again please? I don't know. No. Was that was that knocking? Perhaps you can answer a question for us. Are these actual cells that were used in the Giltsper Street Compter? If you've been wrongly accused, can you speak into the red light? and tell us what you want to say. What? Loud footsteps are heard above us. We are in the basement under concrete, so this cannot be the sounds from the street above. Here is the enhanced audio taken from my digital recorder. As we are still down in the cells in the basement, our motion detector light activates on the third floor hallway as movement is heard which is captured on both of our static cams. For our last session, we go back up to the fourth floor where Phil will try to communicate further with whoever is there. Well, I'm back on the uh, top floor. I brought a stool up with me this time. It's uh, about seven flights of stairs coming up and down. So uh, whoever used to live or work up here, they must have been pretty fit. Anyway, the reason why I've come back up is because when Mark did his session, um, he was hearing noises from up here, on, that's the floor above him. And also, when I was up here earlier, um, a, few, a few bits and pieces uh, happened. Hopefully they'll be caught on uh, audio and on camera. There's a bit of a noise just there, to my left. That was the sort of noise I was hearing from down there, downstairs. I'm walking. You've probably been watching us um, go around the building. 
with our, uh, with our toys. As I said before, they're not anything which can hurt you. They're just to help us see you and to hear you. So come and join me. You might, uh, might be thinking, what are these three men doing walking around in the dark and talking to themselves. I sometimes wonder that myself, to be honest, but in all seriousness, we, we come to places like this to find out about the history. We do a lot of digging, a lot of research. But the main reason we come here is to talk to you, to help us find answers, not just about who you were, who you are, but also to give us a glimpse of what happens after you die. When we were up here before, we could hear lots of different noises. You appeared beside Mark. Am I sitting in the wrong place? You know, perhaps, you know, you, you feel that you can't come into this area now because I'm too close to the stairs. If you're Okay, so you're knocking. Would you like me to come into the room? A voice is heard, followed by knocking, and there is also a faint voice that says, Hear me. Here is the audio with enhancements. If you're... Okay, so you're knocking. Would you like me to come into the room? If you're... Okay, so you're knocking. Would you like me to come into the room? What happened to you was, was awful. If I knew your full name, I could look in the newspapers the old newspapers and find out what happened to the person that did that terrible thing to you. That's all I need from you is your surname. So if I hold this out... Guys? Yeah? Yeah. What have you called? Something's in that room. It just went past the window and I've got it on film. Something went across that window. Kate? I capture a shadow figure moving in the room opposite on my phone. Is this the prostitute that was murdered whose name is Kate? Here is the footage again, with enhancements.
Here is the footage again, in slow motion and with enhancements. we complete our investigation at the Viaduct Tavern. There are said to be many spirits that stay within its walls, and we definitely made contact with the murdered prostitute that is known by the name of Kate. She showed herself to Mark, and we captured her on film. On the ground floor in the main bar, the tavern is always busy with customers enjoying a pint or two, but in the empty rooms above, others still wander the rooms from a past that now lays abandoned. <laughs> 